So we seem to be getting a lot of these kind of comments at the moment. So let's have a history lesson on the beret in the British Army. The first unit to wear berets were the Royal Tank Regiment way back in 1918 due to the confined spaces inside a tank. It made it impractical to wear uh, a typical service dress cap. And then in 1924, the pattern was officially adopted by the Royal Tank Regiment. And it wasn't until 1941 that the Airborne Forces adopted their maroon beret. And the following year in 1942, the commandos adopted their infamous green beret. Now it's worth mentioning that in the Second World War, from the beginning until 1943, the field service cap or wedge cap was used by soldiers, uh, which is a side cap seen here. And then in 1944, the General Service, or GS cap, straight cap ridiculous, as it was also known, uh, came into use, which at first glance might look like a beret, but it's very important to remember that it's not a beret at all. It's more along the lines of a tam o shanter. So, the Second World War pattern beret, which was worn, is completely different to a modern beret. First of all, the troops didn't shape them. Secondly, there was no regulation on how it was meant to be worn, such as cap badges, as you can see here. They were worn all over the place, and the berets on a lot of the guys in these photos are worn um, on the back of the head for all intents and purposes. The crown on a Second World War pattern beret is also much larger than a modern uh, day beret. And it's worth mentioning that it's very dangerous to apply modern standards or terminology to uh, historical events, um, as many of you will probably learn from this. It was actually after the end of the Second World War when the British Army, across the whole army, adopted the beret as standard headwear.